Good morning, folks. Delta Aquarius finishing up while the Perseid meteor shower, the unquestioned best one of the year, set to ramp up over the next two weeks. NOAA's Environmental Visualization Lab showing Saharan sand traversing the Atlantic. Their lab is the Earth-focused version of Goddard Scientific Visualization Center. Mile marker 28. Wildfire. Washington. How good is the Landsat 8? This good. Shot of the day in NASA's Earth Observatory. Folks, I have been critical of Nancy Atkinson when I believed mistakes were made, but I wish to change not one word of this article. Couldn't have said it better. We were discussing the fizzled comet claims in the comment section yesterday as being restricted to visibility, not interaction, and that the evidence simply suggested it was waiting until it hits the frost line in a few days before it brightens. For those in the dark, an article claiming ISON might have fizzled is highly flawed. The ISON discussions on the website are being well received as well, I thank you for that. Might as well get a position check on ISON. Still too close to the sun to be seen, but let me just set this in motion, taking 24 hour jumps day by day. Might start to get visible here. Folks, there are nine new climate reports that just came out. I'm as fresh to these as you, so feel free to get a head start, but we will be breaking these down in the evening news of the coming days. South of Mexico, yet again, we have a named storm. This time it's Gill, and the experts have a variety of options for him. Meanwhile, a more direct land threat is building in the South China Sea, going to hit southern China and northern Vietnam by the weekend. Extreme weather born of that low of focus for nearly a week let loose again last night over Europe. Storms still sticking south in the southwest Pacific, but a new low cell is nudging towards the North Island of New Zealand tomorrow. We have spread cells and two quasi-convergence lines, and you can just expect the bad storms between them and likely extending a bit further than the severe zone NOAA has here. Still snoring on the solar flares, got nothing major. Sunspot groups spread across the disk and trying to garner attention. Starting top right, the northernmost portion looked to be going delta days ago, but now appears to be dead. The southern group shrank in umbral size, but is holding together with a trailer on the limb behind him. North of that, we have our two new primary active regions, magnetic mixing at the lead and a leviathan lurking in his shadow. That is a big sunspot. Solar wind is relatively calm, density even falling a bit at the end. Looking at the magnetic connectivity of Earth, we bunched up better than yesterday into a group firm on the backside and another group solidly in the northern earth-facing coronal hole, which now actually appears like it might be thinly trans-equatorial, which would be a change from yesterday, but Gong shows a lot of magnetic instability in the larger umbral fields and you can't really tell there. Coming to the SDO, it certainly doesn't appear that the coronal hole crosses the equator, but alas, they do face Earth, so we are indeed in a minor quake watch. Average quaking is three six magnitude quakes per week. It's been nearly 11 days and we've only taken two small six pointers and in the four days since our last coronal hole, we've had none. Expect that slight downtick to end shortly. Premium content is available. Last day to use the coupon code STARWATER for discount. Eyes open. No fear at 6.50 a.m. Eastern time and that's the news. Be safe everyone.